Welcome to this Jeremy Bamber White House Farm podcast. Over the coming episodes, we're going to explore the case in a different way from how it's been handled before. There are key individuals in the case about which very little is actually known. The police and media have had very specific agendas in presenting information about these individuals in a particular way. When the police build a case against someone for murder, they will often cherry-pick from the evidence, to the detriment of the accused, which is what happened in this case. This means that few people have heard what was withheld from the jury about those people. Sheila Caffell, Jeremy Bamber's sister, was the catalyst for events that triggered a shock that swept the UK in 1985. Initially. The newspapers were filled with stories of a mentally ill woman who'd killed her parents and children in a shooting. But who was Sheila Caffell? Was this fragile young mother really capable of killing her parents and children? Did she know how to use a gun? Could she really have overpowered one of the victims, her father, the six foot four Neville Bamba? Was Sheila's medication really an impediment to her using a firearm? And did Sheila really have an illness that was serious enough to cause her to kill four members of her family? The second woman, who is a key individual in the case, is Julie Mugford, the 21-year-old university student who was apparently, according to the prosecution, manipulated and corrupted by Jeremy Bamber into taking drugs and committing crimes. Young Julie had hopes of marrying into the affluent Bamba family, but was Julie really a witness of impeccable character? Did she really know for up to a year that the entire family was going to be shot by her boyfriend and say nothing before or immediately after? Is this really the truth, or does the evidence in the police case tell a very different story of a girl who, by her own actions, found herself in serious difficulty over her numerous criminal offences and who was used as a pawn by police in their pursuit of Jeremy Bamba. Did Julie volunteer to go to police with her story or was she forced to do so by others after making up a lie to hurt the lover who dumped her? The jury also didn't know that Julie Mugford had arranged a very lucrative deal with the news of the world, dependent on Jeremy Bamba's conviction. But are these key issues the sum of it? Not really. There's a lot more to know about Julie Mugford. Anne Eaton, Jeremy's maternal cousin, was also a prime mover in the case against Jeremy Bamba. Anne Eaton's police statements made between 1985 and 1991 show how she and her father Robert steered the police case in a particular direction. Anne has made no secret of this. And she didn't just move into White House Farm after the shootings, but ultimately benefited financially from the tragedies. These facts are undisputed. Anne participated in a TV programme about the case in the 1990s, where she was played by Diane Keane. In different accounts, Anne is seen as the feisty female heroine who saved the day, albeit for her own ends. There is a lot more to know about Anne. She made multiple draft police statements which illustrate her conduct and influence in the case, both pre- and post-trial. Key information often didn't make it to the final draft statement, and Anne's note cards are surprisingly candid. You'll find out more about the police statements by the farm secretary which implicated Anne's husband, Peter, in serious fraud against the estate. Anne entrusted with a key to White House Farm by her target, Jeremy Bamba, went about ensuring the conviction of her cousin and making the discovery of evidence her other mission. The episodes will have three main categories and we will be explicit about the sources we use. Firstly, the largest category, Prime Evidence, will present the evidence from the police case and these take the form of Holmes files which stands for Home Office Large Major Inquiry System. These are copies of evidence disclosed to the defence after the failed 2002 appeal. 
They include materials such as police statements, forensic examination forms, police notes and actions, and internal memos, as well as evidence such as diaries from the relatives of Jeremy Bamba, which were kept as material exhibits by police. These documents also include contributions from various other investigations into the case, such as the post-trial Dickinson Inquiry, the 1991 City of London Police Inquiry, into the conduct of the relatives and police officers who worked on the case. And in addition, these documents also come from the last inquiry, which was called Stoken Church and handled by the Metropolitan Police for the Crown Prosecution Service in preparation for the 2002 appeal. Within this material are some previously undisclosed documents, internal police letters and reports between solicitors senior police officers and the Director of Public Prosecutions. There are also indexes and references to material which remains undisclosed, some of which was previously held under public interest immunity, known as PII. But even though this was later removed, a huge amount of material still remains hidden from Jeremy Bamba and his legal representatives. There were two case reference numbers, the first created on the 7th of August 1985 for when the case was considered a murder-suicide, and a second for the murder inquiry created on the 7th of September 1985. Non-disclosure remains an important aspect of this case. When the police state that they've made all relevant disclosure, what they mean is is they've disclosed all material that they consider relevant from the second case file. Evidence pertaining to the culpability of Sheila Caffell has been held under the first file reference and remains undisclosed. In addition, many exhibits which contained blood or fingerprint evidence were illegally destroyed by police special branch in 1996, contrary to court orders in place to protect them. However, we can address the blood evidence from two separate sound moderators, also referred to as silencers, that are now known to have been seized from the house. Future episodes will focus on Jeremy Bamber himself, the victim of the key players who built a flawed case against him, which only succeeded because the defence were denied all of the evidence that proved his innocence. You'll be able to find out more about Jeremy Bamba as a person. This will include information on his psychology and reports confirming that he has no psychopathic tendencies or any type of mental illness, and never has. We will bring you more detail on the polygraph test which he passed in 2007 and which showed no signs of deception in any of his answers you'll be able to understand why Jeremy's conviction is of political importance as his status as a whole-life tariff prisoner was upgraded from a minimum tariff of 25 years by a politician and not a judge. And listeners can gain an insight into who Jeremy Bamber is as an individual fighting to prove his innocence for 36 years. Thirdly, there will also be contributions from the campaign team on the latest events in the case. This is as the application to the Criminal Cases Review Commission is made. So this will be your resource for the latest news. These contributions will include all of the latest findings, discussions of forensic reports and also include interviews with members of Jeremy's legal team as well as forensic scientists who've worked on the evidence. We'll speak to other individuals who've fought miscarriages of justice in high-profile cases as well as friends of Jeremy Bamba and those who campaign for Jeremy as well as other human rights cases. Listeners can discover for themselves what really goes on when someone fights a wrongful conviction and will come to realise how difficult it is to overturn a conviction in an adversarial system and without financial resources. We hope that you'll find our uploads on each Wednesday an interesting listen and that you'll learn much more about one of the most well-known and long-running miscarriages of justice cases in British legal history. This podcast is produced by JB Campaign Limited, and we work for Jeremy Bamba as volunteers, preparing material for the Criminal Cases Review Commission from the evidence. 
we have specialist knowledge of the case and access to a vast amount of material that has been unavailable to any other writer or filmmaker before. If you want to know why we believe so strongly in Jeremy's innocence, then you're in the right place to do that. And you can visit our website for a lot more information at www.jeremy-bamba.co.uk. 